things that I would like to recommend is get more than one opinion. So for example, if, if you go into your local pool store and there's a guy there that's become a water chemistry expert, awesome. I mean, it, it takes some time and effort for people to really understand water chemistry. I would caution, though, if you start getting, I don't know, too much information, too much call for product, buying too many exotic things to fix certain things, I would question that a little bit because in the field, when you work on a swimming pool and when you've been around a swimming pool your entire adult life and you've, you've worked on, built, seen thousands of swimming pools, there's a few basic things that come up over and over and over. And if you do those things when it comes to water chemistry about t and taking care of your pool, you're probably going to be fine. A lot of times what happens is when you sit in, a, in an office, and we used to have this discussion when we had a retail store. Uh, a retail store is all based on price per transaction. So if you look at your receipts at the end of the day and you're noticing that the average transaction, if you add up the number of customers and you add up the total dollar and you divide it out and you realize, oh, our, our average customer transaction is $28. And, and to be really good at it, to make enough money, you need $35 or $40 per customer for you to really make profit in the store. A lot of times what happens is it's a no-brainer for the sales manager or the sales team to go, wow, we just need to find more stuff to sell to those base people that come in. And I think I've seen that happen way too many times that I'm comfortable with, where a guy that's really good at water chemistry starts selling all these additional things because in his mind, he needs to get that price per transaction up. So if he can talk you into buying this extra thing here or that extra thing there or 14 bottles of this to take care of the three bottles of this that you put in that then you have to add this and now your $28 transaction went up to 162 he just brought the average store up quite a bit, that, the average price tag up quite a bit. And I think that's where good guys in the store don't necessarily recognize what's in the field. That's only one scenario that can happen, but that's one that I've seen happen a lot of times. Another thing that happens is people get flyers in the mail, and, and maybe it's advertising uh, an epoxy finish for all types of surfaces of the swimming pools. And they think, well, my pool's kind of ugly. I could just use it on that. And we used to get, back, back in the day when we had a retail store, we got all kinds of questions about what types of paint should I use and, and all of that. And our recommendation was always don't ever paint. Don't ever use an epoxy or, or a latex-based paint because once you do, you have to continue to do it. And that was, even in those days for me, that was pre fiberglass pool, that was mainly gunite pools that people were talking about needing to paint. Because most people thought that the surface of the pool was paint, when in most cases it wasn't. It was white marsite that then it was getting dirty and getting faded and getting rough, so they wanted to paint over it. We always tended to stay away from that on many different for many different reasons, but the primary one was once you did it and if the conditions weren't exactly perfect, every couple years you had to do it again and again and again, and it became more work than it was worth. Now with fiberglass pools making this real surge in the last 20-25 years in our market, there's this thought and desire, especially as a pool gets a little older and it gets faded, well we could paint it, we could add an epoxy finish and make it look really good. Which you probably can, although understand that your pool, if emptied of water, is literally a fiberglass boat. It's what boats are made out of. And it doesn't take that much to push that out of the ground because you're not displacing that much weight. And the guys that are draining fiberglass pools and trying to paint them and epoxy coat them, unless done properly, you run a lot of risks. So I would hesitate to not do that. Even if there's a magic product that the, uh, that the marketing department of some company is pushing, I'm going to tend to lead you to let's not do that. Let's look for alternative solutions. Now, there are some really good coatings and finishes that can be done in fiberglass pools, much like on gunite pools, but lean on the experts. Lean on the guys in your market that are really good at what they do to get the professional advice. Don't just take the information out of a magazine and go, oh yeah, I'm going to order this $200 gallon of epoxy paint and I'm going to slap it all on there and everything's going to be gold. Unfortunately, that $200 worth of paint might end up costing you $50,000 in repair. And 
again, we've seen that one happen too.